Welcome back. It is 922. In the courts this week, the retrial of a man accused in a 2016 murder. Michael Enoch is accused of killing Daryl Gentry, an apartment complex on San Antonio's east side. Yesterday, Gentry's girlfriend identified him as the man who shot and killed her boyfriend that night after the three were involved in an altercation. Here's a clip from Paul Venema's latest report. Tamisha Tomlin said while she and her boyfriend, 29-year-old Daryl Jensen, were quarreling, a man approached them. He's sitting right there. He has on a black suit with a white shirt and glasses on. During 35-year-old Michael Enoch's murder trial, Tomlin identified him as the man who approached them. He was angry, she said, because of the couple's loud argument. She testified that she stepped between the men as they exchanged words. Seconds later, he just pulled out a gun out of his pants and I asked him not to shoot him. This was uncalled for. And so when Daryl pushed me out of the way, that's when he shot him. And Paul joins us now with our weekly court debrief. Now, Paul, Michael Enoch's original murder trial ended with a hung jury one year ago. Now his retrial, what are the legal advantages for both sides when a case like this is tried all over again? It, it's a whole different thing, and I think probably the state has the advantage uh, when in a retrial like this. It, it's, uh, they, they have a, a somewhat of an idea what the defense strategy is going to be. Prior to that, like in the first time around, the state has to give the defense their witness list. They have to tell them who they're going to call. The defense doesn't have to do that. But now, coming back the second time, the state knows who the defense is going to be calling as witnesses, so they can better prepare for, uh, for what, what the testimony is going to be from the defense. Paul, are there any other key differences between a retrial and an initial trial, kind of like this one? Well, the, the, the main difference is, is that, uh, uh, the, uh, again, in talking about the, the advantage that the state has, that's, that's the main difference. Everybody has a chance to take a closer look at the witnesses to find out and to, to uh, see whether or not their testimony is going to be consistent with the first time around. So it, 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 uh, in, that, in that case, it gives both sides a, a little bit of an advantage, but also uh, makes the witness testimony even more critical because they're going to come back and say, well, and, and they can, they, the jury will not know there was another trial. The jury will just, they will say in a previous uh, procedure, legal procedure, uh, you said this, now you're saying this. So it gives both sides in that case a chance. And so that's what the, uh, they're looking for now, I guess, differences in those testimonies? Exactly, and, and, and they, they probably will try to uh, re-examine their witnesses as well and say, you know, where did we go wrong? We didn't get a conviction first time around. Let's go over our witness testimony and see if we maybe we need to fine-tune things. Another thing, in a case like this, uh, when when you've you've got another year, it was this the, a year had passed between the time the offense occurred and the first trial. Mm -hmm. Now we're two years away. Witness testimony, which is not always the best testimony anyway. Witness testimony uh, becomes a little bit more vague in, at times, and and uh, so that. That gives each side a chance to, to pick apart their witnesses. And, you know, in a, first, in a first proceeding, you said this, now you're saying this. So they have to be very careful with that. So the first trial ended in a, in a hung jury. We've got a new jury now, and I assume a different judge in this case, which is required as well. Right, it is. It's, it's uh, Judge uh, Sid Harrell was the first judge around, and, mm -hmm. and now it'll Judge Laura Parker down in Felony Impact Court. So there's a lot of variables, a lot of different things. So. Even though the facts essentially are the same, there's a lot of things different about this trial that, that uh, we're going to have to deal with as, as the trial goes along. And as far as it go, goes along, by the way, I was just informed that there are, the state has already rested. So this is moving along pretty fast. We'll be interested to see what kind of defense witnesses are, are called. They have to, they're stuck with the same witnesses that they had the first time around, sure. with the exception of expert witnesses. Should they decide they want to call an expert witness, they can. Uh, but they have to notify the state, and that gives the state an opportunity to get a uh, rebuttal witness. But as you said, there should be real n no big surprises here whatsoever. The key witnesses are the same. Yeah, exactly. There's there's not an opportunity at this time for the uh, defense to bring in a, a smoking gun, a silver bullet witness, if you will. Mm -hmm. So they're they're stuck with who they had first time around, and the state has the opportunity to to go over that that uh, first trial's testimony and, and pick apart that testimony. All right. So basically, same story from both sides. Just uh, 12 new people listening 
exactly, trying to decide exactly. who to decide. And that's what the, the, uh, the first jury was told. They, they were given what's called an Allen charge, which means uh, uh, you, they, they say they couldn't decide. So the judge gives them what's called an Allen charge, and that means he says, look, uh, another jury is going to get the same set of facts and everything, so you need to get back to work. So uh, it is the same set of facts first time around, just a different panel, different judge, and we'll see what the outcome is. Okay. We'll watch closely. All right. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Have a good rest of the